Good morning. Welcome to the virtual broadcast of the St. James Baptist Church. This is a church where God is exalted, the name of Jesus lifted, and the body of Christ is edified. This is the first Sunday in the month of April, and spring has sprung. We will now have scripture and prayer by Reverend Yvette White. Good morning. Today's Old Testament scripture will be taken from Isaiah 25, verses 6 through 9, and it reads as follows. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheep that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The end of the first reading. Our New Testament scripture will be taken from 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 11, and it reads as follows. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I hand it on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scripture and that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures and that he appeared to Cephas then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles unfit to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank and praise you for your gift of grace. We thank you for Jesus' life. We thank you for his commitment, and we thank you for his death and resurrection. Father, we thank you for your plan of salvation. We thank you for justification, and we thank you for sanctification. We thank you for loving us in spite of ourselves and meeting us where we are to bring us where we need to be. Father, we love you because of who you are. We praise your holy name. You are truly worthy to be praised. You are God and God all by yourself. And we love you for it. Father, this morning we ask that you would be with the families of Miss Isabella Davis and of Mr. Lawrence Davis, the Davis and Roberts families the St. James Church family as we mourn the loss of our loved one. God, we ask that you would help us to find comfort in the wonderful memories that we have. 
and that in due season you will turn our mourning into dancing. Father, we ask that you would visit the sick and shut in and that you would be with the whole of St. James. That you would forgive our sins and strengthen us where we are weak. Help us to be the people that you've called us to be and be with the man's servant as he prepares to bring a word from you. Help us to be still in our spirits to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Amen. Following our sermonic selection, the next voice you will hear will be that of our pastor, the Reverend Dr. James Abel Jr., as he comes to us with the sermon topic entitled, A Strange Question in the Cemetery. Even in the midst of all of those things, we have the grace 
and the mercies of the Most High God and the surety that we are not left to ourselves, that God is with us, that God truly has been, that God truly is, and that God truly shall always be to us, Emmanuel, God with us. Let us pray. This morning we are praying for the whole people of the St. James Baptist Church. We're praying for our sick and shut in. We're praying for our country. We're praying for our state. Praying for our city. Praying for our leaders, nationally and statewide, and local municipalities. And lastly, we are praying that God would reign in such a way that we all would experience his peace throughout the globe. The peace that surpasses all understanding. Let us pray. O oh God of grace and glory, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for the many people who have tuned in. We give you thanks for those who have not. You know who they are. You know where they are. And so we pray, O oh Lord God, that you will send your word out to them. And we know if you send it, it shall not return unto you void. Uh, bless the hold of humanity this day that we might realize the significance of resurrection morning to know that you truly are the resurrection, that you have brought us, that you have kept us, and that you're still with us, and that you're leading us from one degree of grace to the next. And for that we say thanks be to God. Amen. And this morning, beloved, I'd like to speak to you from the Gospel of John. Chapter 20, the 15th verse, the Gospel of John, chapter 20, the 15th verse. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. The end of the reading. Beloved, I want to preach this morning as the Holy Ghost gives unction, as God shall guide from this topic, a strange question in a cemetery, a strange question in a cemetery. A hope is in people's hearts today for it is Easter. The perennial faith blossoms again. The wistful dream of life being stronger than death return with the certainty of springtime. It is Easter, and the mighty anthems of hope are loosed in the human heart. The grand perhaps, and the great maybe, that this is not all comes back in vigor and force. It is Easter. Dark foreboding lift. The dark depths of the grave bear a beam of light. Oh, how we need Easter. Without it, life is petty and tragic. What with darkness and cold, off at the end of the little day we are given. I recall the late Dr. Gardner C. Taylor as he shared a vignette from his ministry of pastoral care as a reflection on the value and meaning of life. And he said, I stood not too long ago with a man in a hospital room. His eyes were something circles of sorrow and heartbreak. The sob in his soul shook his whole body. His voice quavered and broke. And there was about it an immense sadness. In the bed lay a lean and tossing frame. It was his wife, and she was valiantly but painfully fighting for breath. 
The specter of death hovered over the room. I asked the man finally, how long have you two been married? And he looked at me and a heart rending sorrow was in his face and in his words when he answered, 47 years and now I can't do anything for her. And he says, Dr. Taylor says, is that what life is all about? Is it a bright day doomed to an everlasting night when the lights will go out and there will be nothing left forever? See that family all laughing and gay, the little children playing happily around their mother and father. What a sight of joy and peace. But one day, one day, a dark cloud will settle over that happy family. Laughter will be silenced and smiles will be frozen. Death will enter, and there will be one less of that happy circle, and then another. For our dearest loves are doomed to wither at the hand of cruel time. Is this all for which we can hope? Is it any wonder that Paul cried out, if in this life only, we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. The happiest life, joined as it is to death, has over its shadow. <coughs> Wrong seen forever on the throne, truth forever on the scaffold. Evil flex mighty muscles that takes away the peace and joy of life. For we seem never to escape from warfare with the power of darkness. There are lies and deceit and injustice and violence and schemes and ugly maneuvers. For sin is in the land, casting his withering blight on the sons of men. We see it in our nation, turning up people who are trustees of history's highest undertaking into a snarling, screaming, screeching society of suspicion and conflict. Is this our fate? To know nothing better than a grim and losing battle against the power of sin and the sting of death? And at last, to go down to a lonely grave, broken and defeated. That was the way it looked with the people who loved the Lord and who followed him to the end. His death on that fearful Friday meant that evil thinking as men, evil walking as men, evil talking as men had done him in. For they had killed the Prince of Glory. What had he done? Those who knew him said that his judge had found no fault in him. Those who knew him most intimately said he went about doing good. When they nailed him to the cross, some sarcastically screamed, he trusted in God. Let God deliver him now if he will have him. But now he was dead. The bright burnished dream had ended as a horrible, bloody nightmare. The high holy crusade had ground to a stop in an ignominious ditch. The splendid hope was now in mangled despair. Hands that had healed the sick bore now the ugly scar of a cruel spike. Hand that had touched the blind, healed the sick, and cleansed the leper, were now frozen in the chill clutch of death. And those shining eyes, full of grace and truth, which had stilled the tempest in human souls and inspired frightened people to be brave, were now fixed in the stare of death. 
That voice which had sounded like the singing of angels was silent in the stillness of the grave. They had taken him down and buried him in Joseph's new tomb. The high adventure which had started in a cradle in Bethlehem had ended on a cross on Calvary. And Jesus was now a bruised and broken corpse in a cemetery. Still, love is a stubborn thing. It somehow goes on anyhow. Love is perhaps the most persistent thing on earth. It marches through disaster and disappointment. Love shoulders up its load and keeps on climbing through the ascent is steep, though the ascent is steep and dizzy. Though there are barriers and blockade, it never stops marching. I do not say now what I am going to say in any flippant or critical sense, but in admiration for the believing stubborn quality of love. In my 34 and what half years as pastor, 25 years as a clinical chaplain and counselor, I have never or rarely ever seen a mother or father for that matter coming to talk to me about their children's problems in school or with the courts or while incarcerated who did not in some way qualify the child's wrong or minimize it or make some sort of excuse for it. But this is a mother's love, a father's love, and it reveals itself a stubborn, determined thing. Women and men have gone on 20 and 30 years and more in the hope that they could change the failings of their marriage partners. For love has a persisting, stubborn quality. Somehow it goes on anyhow. Uh, glory to God. Early on Sunday morning, after the crucifixion, Mary, whose sins had been forgiven, got up early. She got up early to go where they had laid him. She could not do much. Well, he was dead and discredited. But she loved her Lord and simply wanted to be there. And you know, a cemetery is so final and hopeless. But Mary could not stay away. Love woke her up, pushed her out of her home, and drove her to the cemetery. For love will go to a cemetery and beyond. If you do not believe it, go into almost any cemetery at Easter or All Saints Day or Christmas. And you will see people standing humbly and wistfully around little mounds of earth with their love offerings of flowers and plants. You will see that love is a stubborn, determined thing. Not even death can stop it. Dr. George Buttricks reported that a woman once said, 20 years ago, my child died. If he had lived, he would be 24 today. Did you hear that? 20 years, and love had not forgotten. But love is at last only a sad, defeated, desolate,
quality if death is final. Mary's love of the Lord posted her there in the hopelessness of the cemetery. That same stubborn, touching love put tears of great sorrow in her eyes and an immeasurable sadness in her heart. She had come to that human border where there was nothing to do but weep. And then came the strange question, so very strange to be asked in a cemetery, woman, why weepest thou? Now why ask such a question in a cemetery? A cemetery is a place for crying, for it writes fini over all our love affairs. It is the scene of our earthly separations. A cemetery is a silent place where friends speak back to us no more. It is a cold place where love springtime is chilled in an unmelting winter. Why ask anybody, why do you cry when that person is in a cemetery? For what else is there to do? That is an inept, cruel question. Unless, unless it is Jesus speaking. For glory to God, faith declares that question to be not so strange on the first Easter morning. For Jesus was there in the cemetery and alive and said to her, Mary, and his voice rang joyously in the saddened depths of a soul. It made a difference. Jesus was there and alive. And this made that cemetery so very different. And my brothers and my sisters, on this resurrection morning, it still does. Jesus makes a difference. To be sure, I am sure, we will go on weeping when we lose our loved ones, but we shall weep now as those who have gone. But Jesus has been here now, and we can raise up our bowed down heads. Jesus has been here now, and we can believe that while we may be separated, we shall meet again where the load has lifted and the gate opens wide. Jesus has been here now, and we can believe that life is ever Lord of death, and love can never lose its own. For Jesus has been here now, and we can believe that somewhere there is a land beyond the river, a land whose fields are living green. Then let the glad anthem of Easter ring, for Jesus has been here. And for that, we all can say this morning, thanks be to God, for Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. Amen, amen, amen. Celebration. 
we will hear and hear clearly your voice as you give us an invitation to become your disciples that we might find ourselves at a place where we can confess with our mouths and believe in our hearts that Jesus is our Christ and you have raised him from the dead and so it is this day and every day that we celebrate your resurrection. Bless the whole people of the St. James Baptist Church and all those who have tuned in to worship with us. And we pray, O oh Lord God, that you will continually lead us, guide us, direct us, protect us, and empower us by your most Holy Spirit. Fill us to overflowing with your all-embracing love that we shall be a blessing to all those that we encounter and embrace along our sacred journey. To you and you alone be the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Stay well, stay safe, and continue to serve the Lord where you are, as you are. For God be the glory. Amen. and glory we give you thanks for this day we ask your blessing upon the elements bread representing your body wine your blood if there's anything that would keep us from eating as brothers and sisters in Christ we ask forgiveness even now as we eat and drink we think on what you did for us on Calvary as we eat and drink today we think about what you're doing as we're gathered as we eat and drink we look forward with an anxious expectancy to what it shall be like to eat and drink in the new Jerusalem. Bless our time together in fellowship to your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same man also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, For this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Drink ye all of it. Blessed be the ties that bind our hearts and Christian love. And now may the grace and peace and the sweet communion of the Most High God be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thank you for watching. You may continue to watch our worship services via our church's website, or you can watch us on Facebook, where we encourage you to leave comments regarding today's message, share the video with family members or friends, or even start your own watch party. I kind of like to invite you to join us via Facebook Live on Wednesday, April the 7th at the hour of 7 p.m. for Bible study. Thank you to those that continue to give faithfully to this ministry despite these trying economic times. If you would like to give, please send your check or money order to St. James Baptist Church, or you can give online through our church's website, 
using Givelify. To learn how, please watch this short video. Givelify is giving simplified. Givelify is the simplest, most beautiful way to give and track donations to the place of worship or charity of your choice. You're not limited to the cash you have on hand. There's no need to write checks, and there are no complicated forms to fill out or text message codes to remember. Givelify automatically pinpoints your location and intelligently identifies the fundraiser, worship service, or conference you're attending without the need to search. Since Givelify automatically detects where you are, making a donation can be completed in as few as three taps. Tap 1. Use one of the pre-configured denominations to choose your donation amount. Tap 2. Select the campaign to which you'd like to contribute. Tap 3. With your stored credit or debit card, complete your donation in one tap and get an immediate donation receipt. Setting up recurring giving is a simple two-tap process. Tap the frequency you'd like and you'll never forget to make your gift. Givelify lets you easily see your complete donation history. Mark the place of worship you normally attend as your home for quick one-tap access. Givelify. Tap. Give. Done.